Hi, everyone. It's Malika Chopra, founder of Intent, and I'm excited to announce my new book, Living with Intent, My Somewhat Messy Journey to Purpose, Peace, and Joy. Right now, I'm having a conversation with my very good, close friend, Holly Perkins, who's extremely accomplished. Um, she has a new book coming out called Lift to Get Lean, as well as an organization she started called Women's Transformation and is involved with a company called Baladea. So, Holly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And most importantly, Holly is my very close friend um, and someone who has been on my personal journey of um, – on and off, kind of getting on the fitness path, setting intentions, setting goals. And Holly, I've always loved working with you because I feel like you're very um, understanding and balanced um, and forgiving. And talk a little bit um, with me about setting intents for our fitness journey. Um, you know, I think what you just said really underscores it. I think in life, we all have these intentions to be healthy and be fit 100% of the time as though we should always be at this place of optimal fitness and health. And the truth is, and the reality is for 99% of human beings, you just can't always be on, on, on all the time. And so, you know, you have such a busy, crazy life. And I think for you, it's really important that staying in alignment with your intentions really helps during the times when you can't stay perfectly in line with the activities that are going to get you there. And so for me, it's always been about set the intentions, what is it that you want to achieve, but then also be gentle with yourself when you're not able to stay, you know, quote unquote, on the bandwagon all the time Mm -hmm. and just get good at the roller coaster and realizing when maybe you've gotten off track to realign with your intentions, and then get good at getting back on track. And so I've always really encouraged people in general, and you as well, to just know when it's time to get back on track. And I think you've always done such a good job at that. Thank you. And Holly, you also, as someone who's obviously an expert in this field, um, I know from our personal relationship that you yourself go on kind of being on, being off, the caffeine, um, then <laughs> again, um, around your 40th birthday, really kind of getting, taking your own personal journey to another ne- level, and now I know you're beginning a new organization, so tell us a little bit about your journey. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think my own personal journey really does fuel all of my philosophies as I help other people, because I realize I'm a health and fitness professional, and I'm dedicated to, you know, really being as healthy and fit as I possibly can, and I realize, like, even for me, that's hard sometimes, so I'm very transparent about that in my life and in my profession in general, that it's like, listen, if anybody should be perfect all the time, it's me, and I am so not, and I've really gotten good at accepting that. It's true. I go on and off. It's like, depending on what's going on in my life, I'm either really kind of on the bandwagon where I'm very careful with alcohol and caffeine and sugar and I'm eating a lot of kale and (laughs) not myself (laughs) and it's very boring but I'm very lean and healthy and fit and then there are other times where you know life is such that I loosen up a bit and I think a lot of people in my life are really surprised at how much I'm able to eat what I want and drink what I want and you know relax a little bit and I just think that that is that's reality for most people, and I think that is also, once you can accept that, that you're human and you're not going to be perfect all the time, you're actually going to be more successful. And that is a big part of what I'm trying to infuse in all of my projects. Um, both in my book, Live to Get Lean, I talk about that, how you don't have to be perfect. You just have to get good at getting back on the bandwagon and, again, realigning with your intentions and remembering what the end goal is. And, you know, enjoying the fact that it is a process and it is a journey. Mm -hmm. Um, Women's Strength Nation is very much about that. So it is an organization and a movement to help women discover and uncover their inner personal strength through the practice and the conversation of strength training. Mm -hmm. There's so many metaphors and analogies to life that I see in the gym with strength training. And I think... That's what I want women to really, you know, grasp and understand is 
you know, part of the process is getting stronger within yourself so mm-hmm. that you are better at getting back on the bandwagon or staying in alignment with your intentions. And personal strength comes from that at the same time that you're working on your physical strength. And, and so, so how can people, stuff. what are you, like, wh- wh- how does one get involved with Women's Strength Nation? So we have just launched this past year, and it was a very fast and furious launch. Um, I have a website up, but it is really just a basic website that we're going to be developing here in the next few months. Um, What happened was there's one component of Women's Strength Nation, obviously, is a virtual community Mm -hmm. where women are able to tap in and get inspiration, information, basically a community that really supports us all in the practice and the conversation of strength training, uh, that aspect, the virtual aspect of it, will be growing and is still very much in its infancy. But what might be even more exciting right now is very quickly we um, – we, uh, I, I don't think I can fully disclose this just yet but because mm-hmm. um, it hasn't been officially announced. We're going to be making a, a press release announcement next week. But we've partnered with a business um, that is, let's say, a hospitality company, and mm-hmm. we are going to be launching a series of live event workshops where over a weekend women can come to our event. It's called Women's Strength Nation Live, and it will be a weekend-long immersion in all things personal strength and strength training. So you can come to learn everything you need to know about strength training so that you can go home and really be your own master. But it's also an opportunity to really work on all those other things that we've been talking about, personal strength and really persevering and developing resilience and really developing your own sense of inner strength so that you're in alignment with your goals and your intentions and so that you're going to be more successful then in your path towards health and fitness. Mm -hmm. And so I think the Women's Strength Nation live events are what I'm putting all my attention and focus into right now that I'm so excited about because it's going to be the opportunity to actually meet women and get to talk to them and teach them in person, not just through a book and not just through a website. And uh, that's really, really, I think that is like the the most immediate touch point that people can access Women's Strength Nation right now. That's exciting. So... Holly, do you have any, um, and I know you do, um, recommendations for women who are just kind of feeling blah, who feel like, you know, guilt um, of not kind of being exercising enough or having Mm -hmm. a healthy diet? Um, I know you have inspired me with my chocolate addiction and my Mm -hmm. caffeine addiction. How do we start? Like, what's the first step in even setting the intents or knowing what the intents are on that journey? Oh, gosh, that's so important. The first step is stop beating yourself up. The first step is to stop guilting yourself and feeling that you failed. And the very first thing is to stop that internal dialogue that you are letting yourself down. Then put that aside, accept where you are, and just say, okay, I'm beating myself up because that means I want more for myself. And once you accept the fact that you want more for yourself, then all you have to do is take one little baby step. Don't overhaul your diet. Don't join a gym and plan to go seven days a week. Literally take one little step. If there's one thing that you can do tomorrow that is better than what you did today, take that one step and just Mm -hmm. stay focused on that because that's going to help you lead to bigger steps. And it's also going to start to make you feel better about yourself because you're taking action towards your goals. So, I, I mean, I remember with you, we would start with, like, you know, your macchiatos. We'd have yep. you cut back to one a day. Yep. And then at some point, we would have you cut back to one every other day. And then pretty soon, you were just drinking teas. You know, you Absolutely. had given up your macchiatos altogether. Rather than saying, go cold turkey and give it up altogether, which I think is unrealistic because – you love your macchiatos. There's a yeah. reason you're choosing them. So how yeah. can you give up something that you absolutely love? Just cut back. Just take one little teeny tiny baby step, and you'll be amazed at how far that takes you. And I love that because actually in the book, um, you know, I always talk about intents, but I really started to think about micro intents as we've talked about, like mm-hmm. taking those baby steps. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's just what is it for today that I need to do? Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it could be, yeah, so simple. Let me choose my tea instead of my macchiato. Um, yeah. And uh, that's been very helpful for me. So, well, Holly, I'm 
as you know, um, I love you, and um, I was thinking about kind of one of the things that probably always endeared me to you was um, when you came to India with us, and mm. uh, I saw you, who was like my role model of like <laughs> eating and fitness, and you were just inhaling all the Indian food you could, <laughs> including gulab jamun and ah. all of the desserts, and like you were so <laughs> happy, and I was like, oh my God, even she um, can do that. So, <laughs> so oh my God, I will so never fun. forget that. That just like, <laughs> there was so much food, I will never forget it, and it was the most amazing thing ever. Yeah. So, and gulab I think again, oh, yeah, it. it's so helpful for, you know, I think all of us who are on a journey to see that other people are relatable um, and that's been one of the reasons I just love you and I love working with you so thank you for everything oh it's been my pleasure a hundred percent